Hey everybody, good to see you all. Today we're going to look at some underwater wide angle photography. I'm um, using some images I took from Fiji on a recent trip. We're going to look at some of the issues that came up, uh, some frequent errors, and some ways to solve them. The tip should help improve your overall underwater photography, and I hope you enjoy it. Alright everybody, so I wanted to work some of the types of compositions I was taking when I was in Fiji. Fiji is like the soft cap one of the soft coral capitals of the world, so clearly that was going to be one of the main subjects I was going to be interested in getting. And there's really sort of three kinds of main compositions for wide angle on the reef, and that's what I mean to talk about reefscape type images here, not a shark and manta rays and that kind of thing, but mostly just on the reef. Uh, the first one would be pretty simple, just the basic soft corals, maybe a composition that has a couple of colors in it, and you're just trying to map focus the viewer on the soft corals and the types of beautiful colors that you can see. The second kind of composition might be where you have the soft corals as your foreground, and then you're trying to get a sun ball in the back, so something from, from above the reef, you're shooting up into the sun slightly. These are a bit more complicated because you're going to have a very bright background, so you've got to get close to the foreground subject of, the, of your soft corals and try to illuminate with your strobes um, to balance the light behind. Often with the sun ball, you're going to just assume that you're going to have some of it blown out and just have a, a central part that's white. You can, If you can have the sun be a little bit lower or some clouds come in, then you might not have that issue. But Generally in clear um, tropical waters you're going to have somewhat of a blown out high highlight from that. So the ways to get around that are to hide the sun maybe behind the diver, behind it slightly obscure it with the reef, or even have um, a wall or something behind it where you can hide part of the sun and get, get the sun ball so it's not completely blowing out as a big disc but just part of it's going to um, be bright and as part of the composition and then you just have to make your composition work with the sun ball. And then finally you, want, you can have a composition where you have the diver in the background just hanging out or interacting with the reef and if you get really lucky you might have something where you have the diver, a sun ball and your foreground. Those ones really give you a good story. I think usually the diver gives you a good story as well and you want to try to have divers, you know, not always in the same place, so sometimes in the distance, sometimes fairly close, sometimes looking at the reef, sometimes just swimming along, um, and ways to get the diver to interact are to have them look at the reef, look at the subject that you're looking at, or shine a, a dive light, flashlight at you, so that you can have different compositions with the same um, foreground and a diver in the back. Some common problems we get when shooting underwater are light streaks in the images, backscatter, unwanted items included in your shot, and uneven lighting from your strobes. You can see examples of these in the next couple of images where I've uh, taken shots just to illuminate the problems that you will encounter. For light streaks and backscatter, the best answer is to pull your strobes back so that they're behind the, the dome as close to the handles as possible. Strobes can easily get into the corner of your images as well as you see in the image I showed. Whether it's from the current hitting, pushing it, or you your hit it and move it too far forward, it's useful to check the corners of your images every now and then just to make sure nothing is getting into them after you 
I think there's some shots. Here you can see an example of having the strobes pulled back so they're near the handles and behind where the dome would be on the housing. This helps reduce the likelihood of any light streaks in the corners of your image and greatly reduces the likelihood of backscatter. As you move closer to your subject, you'll bring the strobes in close to the handles and as you move further away, you'll widen out the strobes so that they illuminate a larger area of the reef. Uneven lighting occurs when your strobes are not balanced or they're in the wrong position. So as you set up to take a new subject, you need to adjust the strobe positioning and balance the power out so that you illuminate the subject evenly using the two strobes. After a while, this becomes pretty intuitive. You can find a new subject, set up your strobes where you need them and start to balance the power using some test shots. It doesn't take too long to, before you are pretty comfortable making the modifications as necessary. I'm going to leave you with a few images from the trip. I hope you enjoy them. If you have any comments, put them in the comment section below the video. Thanks for watching. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you've got any comments, questions, or other examples of issues that come up, please put them in the comments below. Great to see you and catch you on the next one.